Hey there. Uh, my name is Ben Sanford. My name is Dylan McKinnon. And we are two so great we apes. We are two great apes. Uh, we are just two uh, best friends that have been involved in nature education and wild activities such as tree climbing uh, professionally and for fun um, and all kinds of stuff. And we're both kind of just nerdy curious about the primal skills and life in general. So we are doing these uh, little these sessions together these, for this podcast that um, we're exploring kind of the um, mysteries of nature, the wonders of the universe, and bringing a little humor to it, a little uh, hopefully bringing some good questions that um, other people may want to consider seriously. That would be our fantasy. Yeah. So, right. So our goal is to kind of end up, end up with some sort of hypothesis towards the end of each, each session. And otherwise who knows what will happen, especially with this guy, Dylan. So thanks, thanks for being Don't here. Don't forget man. hubris. And hubris. Yeah. Humor and hubris. <laughs> Humor and hubris hypotheses. Uh, so what do you want so, to talk about today? So today, um, uh, I would really love to tackle a subject that you have a lot more experience in than I do, which is um, the phenomena of hominid combat skills. So we, our first podcast was on first fire. What are the what what were the implications? What are all the unasked questions about early hominids, our ancestors? first using fire i'd love to hear a bit more of your takes on how um combat skills so focus on self-defense primarily maybe also offense so what what was it like two and a half maybe three million years ago for a tiny hominid uh defending themselves with the tools we had we had you know we have better hands for holding tools and that's our real advantage so um, we didn't have uh, we didn't have firearms. We didn't even have the advanced projectile weapons. We didn't have bows. We probably didn't even have anything like slings. Maybe we had throwing spears. You know, we probably but we probably had rocks. So I guess that's that's the question. Then maybe we did have throwing spears. So you having been having worked with martial arts for how many years have you been working in, you know, with martial arts? Teaching oh, martial arts? about. Uh, 35 oh so <laughs> so i uh, uh i was three <laughs> when you started working so that's a lot more depth and i just feel like there's so many there's so many so many questions i'm sure as we start talking i'll think of more about how that impacted our our role on the landscape how we have fit into the ecosystem and where we were able to where we were able to be a competitive species where uh, the other great apes just j just weren't. Um, we so often hear about how, you know, how, you know, you know, gorillas, they're, they're, they're peaceful, gentle giants, but they're also, it's an incredibly powerful, dangerous animal. Um, we hear about chimps and, you know, they, they go on war parties. We've heard, I'm sure plenty of uh, you know viewers, listeners have heard stories of chimps absolutely wrecking people in the most horrific manner possible. But when in the wild, when humans interact with gorillas, interact with chimps, they run away from us. So yeah. I'm like uh -huh. the the big difference is not our physical strength; it's our it's our mind, but it's also just that that toolkit of a bipedal ape uh we were we were able to fit in in you know uh all divide gorge you know with a with a very you know uh back before it was gorge back when it was a lakeside two and a half three million years ago and what we apparently could hang we were able to to manage yeah. uh surviving and uh and competing with other other species that were um not just other predators which there were a lot more but other great apes so that's a uh and those are, those are some of the questions I would, I would love very to have cool. your perspective on. Let's explore that. That's very cool. Yeah, man. You know, it seems like just right, right, right away, as you kind of mentioned, like we didn't have the physical prowess to compete. But um, isn't it assumed that it's our collective intelligence 
our our, our social capacity that made us you know durable made us um able to survive yeah that's... so like one person versus one gorilla would not gorilla wouldn't run away if that's all that had ever happened but if gorilla yeah. associates over time oh one of these means a bunch of these um that's scary right yeah why would a gorilla run away it must it must have uh we must have had enough time together where they were like oh there's always a bunch of these and they they're scary and they have pointy sticks and stuff yeah. but uh yeah so our social power is really our our defense right yeah you say yeah um <laughs> i guess so we're also you know modern modern non-human great apes they they live in a world with modern humans so there's firearms we have firearms we have fire you know our our yeah. arms our hands make fire so that alone is uh is a problem uh um even if we just went back um you know a million years ago there were most likely thrown spears there are all these other things but we um we were we were definitely able to to hang they didn't outcompete us we were the ones who were able to outcompete them and uh it's like one of the working with my uh i'm working with a group of teenagers for the last year now and as a just a quick training thing i i played around with them i was talking about how how significant um throwing is as a skill that's not often seen as a like a martial art but just um what i would, what I would do with the the kids just to get a feel like a, a quick primal feel as i have let's say i had 15 kids we all held you know just rocks like a regular sized rock in our hands and had them uh had them stand in a circle and say all right everyone someone's going to stand outside the circle i want you all to just pull the rock not throw it just, just cock it like that that motion and have a group aiming at you and how does it feel everyone says it's the ickiest feeling it's an awful feeling it's stepping into a crosswalk and there's a map drop bearing down and you're like oh no it's um so yeah i think ju just from just from that because uh um Chim, squirrels, the other great apes, they, they can't, though, they can sort of, you know, like lob an object, huh. but their arms aren't adapted. So th that alone, just the, um, you know, whenever you hear like descriptions of people getting ready to throw something, if you cock your arm, that's the yeah, same word yeah. with, you know, I know, uh, cocking a gun. Yeah. Or uh, it's a, I think we mentioned that a little in one of our previous casts about how the the modern human body and even like the older ones were designed to throw. So just a tiny person, um, you know, I have a, I have a, I have a ten year old. He weighs seventy pounds, and there's like most predators in the savanna in Africa could easily take him down. And like, what is he going to do? He can't punch. He has no fangs. His skin isn't that thick, but he's got a, a rock in his hand. Uh, that motion alone uh, of, you know, like a cocking uh, a rock, that's a, um, it's an intimidating thing. It's sort of saying like that, that motion says, sure, you can take me, but at what cost? And so like yeah, a, a yeah. group of eight tiny people, um, all with rocks, like there's no, I don't think there's many predators that are familiar with, um, with hominids that aren't going to take that as a serious threat. Just, yeah. just throwing, throwing rocks alone. Oh yeah, it's uh, man, and that's that brings up so many questions right away. One is shoulder structure and how, you know, <laughs> why uh, gr other great apes don't have that structure. They have so many other powerful shoulder mobility stuff like brachiation and all that. But uh, interesting. Um, I seem to recall it's. Our, our spines are more mobile so uh our we can know, do the our the, shock. the whip uh yeah so uh, <clears throat> a, a chimp is only throwing with their arms so i guess what I, I heard is that um throwing like for a chimp they can only throw with their arms magic okay. body i'm gonna sit back into my chair you can only throw yeah. that yeah. because they're just the um uh the the cocking motion yeah. Uh, of pulling back, there's a tension. The whole body gets involved, and with our flexible torso, 
it's more of a there's a it, it's it's more of a, a whip. I think yeah, I, yeah. I'm trying to remember what percentage we we conserve energy. So you don't like, when you when you throw off, you don't just hold it here and throw. There's the last and there's a hmm. uh, there's a storage of energy. So it's you can throw a rock faster than you can throw a punch. Uh, so that's just a that so just starting from that uh um the more power and also that? more power and also yeah. a lot more range so a lot more range i wonder if that has to do with uh you know in proxemics the the escape distance of animals where they feel comfortable around humans because we always have such a big presence i wonder yeah. if that goes back to our throwing abilities they're just like dude Give these things extra space. <laughs> it would have you know? to. Yeah. That's it wild. Is, uh, yeah. Well, That'd you figure, cool. like, um, I'm trying to think, there's not many animals in the natural world that have, uh, to use your know, dungeon, uh, both martial, but I think more of you are familiar with Dungeons and Dragons terminology. So ranged attacks, uh, where it's, you don't have to be right, right there. It's, this isn't a one inch punch. Um, yeah what do we have i guess it's um what skunks and spitting cobras and, and those <laughs> spitting fish that take out spiders or whatever. yeah yeah the, not, uh, a, the, not a lot of things you're right and um, and the ones that have it that's porcupines a, that's, do they they don't actually do that no por- that's um, a myth uh, that's a myth uh, if they did i think they'd be a lot more a porcupine be a lot more dominant critter but no porcupines they have to make contact oh uh, yeah I, I think for I've been thinking about this like for what's a good proxy for for um even the most simplest human human weapons and uh so it's not there I don't think there really is a proxy for a spear maybe with um scorpions that's be the closest thing hmm. but with um uh with a uh with a, so I, I was, I was taking a step back. I was gonna, I was thinking to break down weapons into different categories. So you have just the, the thrown rock. Um, you have, I don't want to use, uh, I don't want to use uh, the word club because there's so many, you're gonna get people jumping in like, oh, like caveman, ha ha ha. This, it gets so, uh, denigrates. So we'll just call it short stick. So a, a stick with a focus is, you know, a bludgeoning force a blunt weapon, weapon and, and uh, long stick. So uh, whether it's whether it has a point on it or it's just, uh, you know, a quarter staff, bow staff length, something that gives you more distance, which isn't as focused on breaking bones, more of keeping more distance from your opponent. Um, one's more jabby, one's more hitty. More likely yeah, yeah. It's, but, but it's causing damage in different ways um and they throw so, differently too if you get to that part i don't know if you're going to add that yeah. investigation yeah so that, that that that's that's the whole that's the i think often with you know i often and this I think I, um you might have better perspective on this so like i've heard with um people mentioned with uh with blade fighting so with any kind of small handed sharp i think that's also so i don't have a i have a couple props here with me i have a uh an ipe dowel which the filter is uh, blending out but it's a it's like a two and a half foot heavy stick um this is definitely one i have a oh, it's a ghost staff um i have a uh uh it's like a six foot just fire sharpened uh stick you know very very crude but uh adequate and um i didn't include just this i didn't bring a prop for like the small like a short um a short stabbing uh weapon say a sharpened stick an antler tine or um i guess also uh digging sticks so that would have been part of our toolkit wouldn't have been so uh i don't what, what would you in martial arts terminology what is a short stabbing weapon what are those what, what, is there a category for those do they have a term i mean it, i think it depends on the art but generally like in uh kali it'd probably be considered a dagger or uh 
Um, I mean, Daga is the traditional like Spanish, yeah. Dagger, dagger works. Um, so just like that, like just just a dagger. Um, uh, it it really does. And again, using I use my you know my my Dylan's son size creature as an example. Um, uh, you know, a leopard could you know easily take a person his size and like oh, there's nothing ba a bare handy human can really do. Um. But uh, let's go back to Tarzan for a second. The um, just a short dagger, it doesn't even have to be uh, bladed because blades came later, but just a pointy stick. You've, I mean, you've almost effectively become a saber toothed animal, haven't you? Right. Yeah. Especially, yeah, especially if it's long enough to penetrate rib cage into organs and stuff, not just through the hide. Yeah. yeah like stabbing, so, yeah. most likely. Yeah. Not, yeah. There's not, there isn't that much else out there. Um, so yeah, I guess. Um, I wonder about the use of like other animal uh, objects. Like <clears throat> I know the karambit was modeled after um, a tiger's tooth, tiger fang. Um, yeah. And like antlers make awesome <laughs> freaking weapons. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're designed to handle torsion and impact. Yeah. Uh. So that are within wrestling so they have, um, they have cool natural curves that are useful and yeah points. yeah and so i i'm just assuming that wild animals have some basic understanding of you know long and pointy means danger <laughs> so not everything had spears but as far as the um not a ranged weapon but a reach weapon I think every predator in Africa would understand that, you know, a long pointy thing, you know, is like, you know, uh, a, gem, a gemsbok or an oryx uh, or a cape buffalo or a hippo or anything that's something long and pointy, whether it's, you know, oh, yeah. an antler or a, a horn or a tusk, they, they have to have some understanding that that is a very serious threat. So I would just imagine that a, um, just holding that would have to have some kind like, like, if a you know if, if a if a leopard or I'm, I'm i'm listing modern species there are all there are all there were so many more scary things back then but just the scene, tell us oh, Dylan, tell us <laughs> what was around <laughs> so uh, the <laughs> um uh a lot of the ancient like australopithecine these are you know um I mean, this mean it just means southern ape. So they were their brains are about the size of a uh, modern chimp, but they had a human, basically a human body, human proportions. They weren't, they couldn't knuckle walk. They were fully bipedal. They were better. They spent more time in trees than the average modern human. Maybe not more than like you and I as kids, <laughs> but they were more a bit more comfortable, and also that they're lighter. So I like to think they're probably like as confident as, as it spent as much time in trees as human kids who grew up around trees. But um, one of the biggest fossil sites for their specimens is in, I want to say South Africa, it's Southern Africa anyway, I think it was in the nation of South Africa. There was a site called Swartkrons and it was a limestone cave that had all manner of bones of ancient humans in it. And they uh, figured, oh, this is a kill site where humans went back to caves and broke apart the bodies and everything else. But then someone did a little bit more looking at the bones they found wow all these ancient human skulls have been broken open and these very there's these very distinct puncture marks so like it was it was basically um it wasn't a leopard but it was a leopard sized animal that ate a lot of primates ate a lot of baboons and ate unfortunately for us a lot of ancient humans because apparently were tasty and uh they were there were so at the time it wasn't just leopards it, there were specialist primate hunters so things out there yeah. that spent a lot of time taking out uh ancient humans that's freaky but uh, so we weren't just so nowadays there's not much there's no animal that hey we're a we're a significant part of their their diet but back in the day that we were absolutely on the menu so i think it must have been important uh, to be able to hold like a deer for a mountain lion or something yeah yeah something like that maybe not all the meals but a lot of the meals <laughs> we were we were there yeah. um so 
from you, so from a martial artist perspective, mm -hmm. what are some of the logistics of let's just let's treat um you haven't had to you know train for like here's how you defend yourself from an ancient uh an ancient uh, human hunting cat when you're tiny um but like the, just the logistics of so let's let's play with we're talking about daggers let's play with daggers as a thought experiment what are the logistics of so this is the other side not not a question of how do you how do you defend yourself with the dagger but if um if you were how much do you weigh uh, too much right now. Two twenty. So, so, so two twenty. You know what? What warrior's body? You know your two hundred, two hundred twenty pound big cat. You know medium lion, large leopard sized bitter, and your hunting. You you had to hunt a small, a smaller human, a small ape. If it has a dagger, what are the logistics? How much of a problem is that? They have let's say a, a foot long, uh, antler tying that's as sharp as a, as a deer antler. So it's not gonna, you're not gonna do surgery with it, but it's definitely gonna give you some new breathing holes. Um, well, what are the logistics of that? Like trying to, I don't know, free form, martial artist, go. So, so just to understand your question, the logistics as a human type creature, killing a uh, just, cat like creature or? As an, uh, so humans are perfect, but unarmed, if you had to, if you if you had to seize a smaller human, but they had a oh, okay. they see. had a dagger. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> um, let's let's make it let's let's add the comment. Let's say that um, because you you're, you're actually a perfect um proxy of this because you you and I have both done quadrupedal movement. So you let's say you're been at his peak. You can move as fast as you possibly can on all fours. You have your hands are taped, no thumbs. So it's just, you know, taped hands. Let's say you've got some kind of claw like thing, but you don't have thumbs. You can't put an arm bar on them. And there's someone who doesn't want to get eaten who has a foot long dagger. What, would the, what are the logistics of trying to, trying to tackle? Let's say it's not even eat, just you have to tackle and incapacitate uh, a, you know, a small person who has a an antler tie in their hand what is what are the logistics around that well you know it's it's a little bit challenging to think about because so much of the i'd say the martial type skills are trained in trained skills that tend to not replace but maybe overpower some of our innate instincts that yeah. in, in 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 general general ways can be life preserving but in many ways would also get you killed if someone else has any skill. <laughs> yeah. So that, so a lot of the martial, like technical martial arts stuff probably wouldn't be super useful actually, in a way. Um, the, the deeper skills of knowing how bodies work and knowing what keeps people alive and, and that kind of stuff would definitely be useful. And I mean, I think some of the techniques would, they help with anyone just thrashing around. You know, if something's just thrashing at you, you can defend yourself. But let's just say someone back then doesn't have any of that skill set, right? They just have their instinctive downloaded self-preserving skills, yeah. right? So I would say it's probably going to be pretty uh, focused around the neck, either in trying to choke, bite, or break someone's neck um, from the back, be my guess. Like you want to get to the back of this thing, if it, if they have if they're if they're oriented this way and they have the yeah, then you want to get behind all that, <laughs> right? So, message going on. Um, that would be my my first guess. So probably I don't know if they'd figure out choking, but you know grabbing, biting. This this is such a soft, delicate area. I mean, it's not hard to hurt. Um, eyes, you know. But no. I imagine like, that's part of the problem of like I, I wish I, I wish I had a um I don't have I, I don't have a, a, a dagger pro dagger proxy I have a um uh, an Archulean hand axe this is you know advanced technology this is yeah. oh come on filter ah there you go we, so, like you're my face doesn't doesn't ghost away and great from the past there we go um uh it's just a lenticular napped. Uh, edge. This is something that our 
chimp-like ancestors wouldn't have had, but Homo erectus certainly had this. Um, it's not a sharp blade, but still it's something you don't want to get poked with. There's a lot of questions of what it was, how it was used. But so this is, this is my, my proxy here. Yeah. Um, the next so kind of, I, what? Well, uh, it's, it's, so to make this, this might be making it a little more complex of a question. So let's say, you know, you, you or some, away. some, some small <laughs> creature has that rock and we're just trying to stay alive and it's thrashing at you with that rock that's the question right yeah. so um there is a temptation what i've noticed like so i'm kind of i'm trying to trying to distinguish between like people's inborn responses and instincts yeah. and then there's the trained response so that's where i'm saying as a martial artist i'm not sure it's helpful because we're going to assume those people don't have a trained response the person back in the back in the day they're not going to be trained to deal with this knife right or dagger would they i well the, 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 there's our question number one we know that um maybe they did you know, maybe they did can we, can we, I, have, I have a coffee in fact around please pause for one second yeah back from our brief intermission from a uh, mild coffee bit and Perfectly topical. I just learned from a friend that the best way to cure a uh, coffee bit is by eating something, selling you slashes. So here I am, a great ape with a banana. <laughs> so, and also during the intermission, I was able to, I knew I had this somewhere. I have a perfect proxy um, dagger. So this is a, um, uh, a deer, I think. I'm not sure if this is elk. It's pretty long time. Let's just assume it's elk. Or massive white tail, I think it's white tail, uh, antler time. So this is what foot long, something like that. Um, with no real, sh it, it's it comes to a point, but it's not sharp. But that's in that range. So it a, a, approximately, it's, it's a saber tooth. It's a right, right. it's a it's a nasty thing. You don't want to get stuck with. No. Um. Hmm. So we were at the question of uh, logistics for a predator to try and like, how would you cope with something that has uh, that has something like this? And I guess, oh, no, so that was what we were asking. We were asking, um, what, was there any equivalent of basic martial training for our early ancestors? Yeah, um, that would be the question. Because we have these pretty universal instincts and I see it all the time when teaching people, you see these these instinctive uh, responses just arise like in everyone, you know, and like the universal ones are like hands up to protect the face, right? Just uh, people blink, they, they do this like flinching thing. But um, there's a lot of things that <clears throat> in training, what we do is we actually become aware of those things and then we we use them against themselves basically so we we train train those to be uh dan uh to be we know that people will do them so we make them um you know <laughs> what what's the word you make them uh you started saying dangerous dangerous i heard is it dane i heard it, 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 no they make them uh anyway they they fight against themselves they, they're they're i can't think of the word counterproductive in some way so oh, hacking so taking advantage yes, of those yes. distinctive responses yes taking but, advantage of them exactly but you also tr you also train in students train those reactions so instead of making instead of starting from scratch so for um you know strike emotions not you know picking some you know odd you know uh yeah you yeah, know, yeah. It, no, you're, you're not doing. You're not teaching them to Naruto run up to. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying, but right, it's, it's right. Really so there, there are there. Yeah, we. I think of it in terms of like enhancing the beneficial kind of universal responses that seem to be. Uh, it's like oh, we can build on that. We can just refine that. You know, um, a lot of them. I'm thinking more defensively. Like defensively is where people mess up, because the defensive. The instinct seems to be when someone has a, a knife type thing, is to mm -hmm. focus lock on the thing and try and grab it. 
to, I mean, to make sense, right? To keep it out of you. So you're like, yeah. oh, I know where I know where this thing is. But what that does in training is it gets your focus locked there. So the person has, and sometimes people go like two hands to it, right? But then yeah. you have this other hand. So you're like, well, then fine, I'll stab you over here. So, um, so there's things like that where I'm curious, like how far back that goes. Cause obviously they worked to some degree, but they seem to be really wired in. Yeah. If um, it's an, if it's an instinct, then no, it must've been selected for. Right. So uh, there's all manner of. I mean, that could kind of help us map out like uh reverse engineer some of some of the predators we were dealing with because we could yeah. look at look at the responses and go okay if, if that's how we were shaped what was making us do that you know um that'd be funny. i so i i this is what so on the instinctive human combative behaviors uh this is one i would love to see someone you know develop a proper scientific hypothesis on but i've noticed over the years of being around and working with young children there's this um this interesting threat posture i see where um i'm using this too where you have um i see it from like toddler to six maybe so tiny humans um and six be pushing where if they're throwing a threat posture at each other, like they want to fight, they do this goofy looking thing. I'll see what imitate. They, um, you know, before I say, I'll ask if you've seen it. So I'm not just, you know, yeah, yeah. gluten first. Bias Ever me. seen uh, a three or four year old uh, ready a punch or cock, their cock a fist or something um, as a threat posture? Ever seen that? Like to another kid? Yeah. Posture? yeah. I'd say it, it reminds me of reminds me of throwing a little bit, but they, they there's that, that that's what I've seen. So they do this; it looks goofy. I'm like, what? Who? I for years thought, who taught them this? Because you never see any of those. They do this thing where they, yeah, they pop their chin forward. Yeah, and they do this funny thing, and I'm like that's not how like you like. There's no. No one's yeah. ever seen like their dad, you know, you know, give anybody like, you square up for, for fighting. This is that that's that'd be like the modern training, you know, both fists up for yeah. um, you know, catching a blow but also punching. But for uh and it, it's I've seen it's weird because I see little kids, they don't just hold it, they'll do it and they'll like to walk up on another kid. Yeah, it's, it's like the most ape-like motion I've ever seen. And yeah. I have like looking at like that looks like a throwing posture. It and does. that's like as like a threat posture that's perfect it's like because if you can't see what's in the hand like i've heard with intelligent wild animals like wolves it's some like, people interacting with you know wolves that are semi habituated humans it's more for them to see your hands so they need to know there's nothing in your hand but uh, if you just do this like whoa what's in the hand it's yeah. like um you know someone it's like the gangster movie you know someone's yeah. like you know, <laughs> you know stick them up like is that a gun i don't <laughs> I, I, I don't know it's um <laughs> Uh, is that a banana but um so just that it that, that's a that's a known scary posture so it i guess the, that'll be the first thing is we working off of the assumption that this is actually an instinctive behavior. i would love to see if there's anyone else who works in uh early child care seen who's like had if someone's had 20 years of working with aggressive four-year-olds is that a relatively universal right. thing yeah. Um, I, I, I've never seen a four-year-old pull this, the punch. Right. Um, I've, I've seen time and again, uh, kids in that, you know, tiny age, you know, range, uh, pull that. So that, um. Really interesting. Yeah. It does seem much more like a throwing thing. Huh? Yeah. That's cool. And it's, it's funny because they, they have nothing in their hands and they'll do this and they'll like, they'll, um, pump, they'll. Mm -hmm. They'll do that, like, 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 like demonstrating. So if I working under the assumption that that is sort of, I, it feels like it's instinctive. This is just, yeah, just yeah. My, it, 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 cause it, it's, cause it's such a weird, awkward motion. Yeah. Actually, now, not, that, now that you say that, I've noticed too, I've 
think I could be I could be misrecalling this, but it seems like they do that weird thing that you're talking about, and then it's like they bring it around, and then the punch is like an afterthought almost. It's like a yeah. it's not a coordinated like from here punch. It's like a bam, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's like well, I don't have anything to throw, so I'll just use my hand. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I know. I like. I had. Um, uh, I'm not the only ape-like person in my extended family. I had a younger cousin who was just even more of like a wild, feral creature than me, oh, and um, like a rough housing with him, tickling him, or uh, you know, trying to run and catch him. He would. Um, but, you know, first off, like me. He was a biter, so that was a complication. Like, ah, quick, you know, catch him. <laughs> like, like, ah, quick, you know, hold him. Like, you know, I got you. Like, ah, 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 yeah. I kind of bite my hands. But he would also, um, he would also do that. I remember being on the receiving end. He would go like, no, eh, like, you no, know, like hitting. Like, no, Sam, no hitting. But he'd, um, oops, I added him. Said his name. Uh, uh, he would, uh, he'd throw that, and I was like, ah, what are you, what are you doing? That's like, that's not doing anything. I want to be like confused. Like, wait, that's not like, like, what is that's that's odd like that could have um that, that, that could have done uh you could have done a lot more hey buddy Wait. oh <laughs> i'm podcasting buddy happy birthday thank you oh uh, happy birthday it's my mom's birthday oh uh, birthday uh so uh that's such a so you you what about if they had a, a rock in their hand though you know that would be a little more that would suck so bad yeah if they had it, so i guess going back to like i guess a, a question of approaching someone who has a rock in their hand that motion so fist like the the, the palm the, the soft of the fist that's like the least painful part to be hit by right, right. but this all of a sudden that does become a and now i'm dead even right. from a even from a four-year-old sized person and he was a small four-year-old that's a that's you know that's bell rung at very least yeah um, and at worst it's have you know, is my eye socket caved in am i missing a bunch of teeth this is like that it it certainly makes um like for a predator that understands this is a hey this could be a problem if you, if you don't see the rock in the hand a tiny little person with this like I'm yep. not going, the calories I get from that person are not going to heal whatever, whatever's coming at my face. Um, Bad trade, yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's cool. That's a neat, neat question right yeah. there. That's, that's, think, thinking about that, like a, um, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, our, 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 our good friend, uh, Mark Ward, maybe we can get him to come on to guest star. All these things he mentioned years ago in teaching martial arts with um uh with blade work and he mentioned why he's be, he's very selective he hardly teaches anyone blade work, work anymore because once you have once you go from just the rock to you know a bladed rock or something um the amount of lethality you get from even from a tiny person with a blade it just goes it goes through the roof where it's a you know a tiny person let's say um a 10 year, nine year old 10 year old if they have uh if they have a a stick like oh that's a problem but you could take a couple hits if you're a predator you can take a hit or two from that and you know stop but if, if someone somebody has a blade or a stabbing weapon, no that's a very serious problem you could die that's hmm. absolutely it's like a tiny person with even basic training um or even is, just is, even just wildly flailing wildly yeah. flailing that's hard to deal with yeah I, wasn't there a study a while back that with um uh ccc tv you know um security camera footage of actual fights whether it's a bar fight or a mugging even a lot of um martial artists uh you know if they're you no know, they had you know, they trained in you know karate for you know, 40 years they get actually mugged and a lot of the motion, what comes when you're actually threatened and, and you're not just in a safe, the safe environment of a dojo, um, a lot of the, what, what happens is just, um, you know, repeated hammer strokes. So that's just that, that rot that rotating, which, um, which with, it, that, that's with so, a knife with the attacker, um, or well, just the, bare, bare or, hand. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Whether, whether it's defending yourself, but just it, it's, it's that, um, that repeated, motion 
motion, whether it's a stabbing motion or uh, if you so again put a rock in that person's hand, and this is suddenly a much more that's a much more serious threat sure. consideration, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And that's and that and you you're mentioning like you know if you're the the target is the neck and the head, but also that's that's so funny if if that's what the predator is going for, then if they're cocked and the tar and the, the the weapon is right there, you go for the head. That's no matter what this thing's loaded. So even if you tackle them and they're in the midst of falling backwards, that this is right there. And as a predator, a big cat, that's your face. That's, yeah, right. you know, that's your face that's taking yeah. taking this. Um, yeah, interesting to think of as you're saying that. I'm just like. So most animals hunt with their face, which is crazy. I guess yeah. chimps, no, right? Not so much. They go grab, but uh, they, they grab and then they bite. Then they bite, right? But many animals, it would be more of a, or like say cats, it's a claw bite. Yeah. So that's still a grab bite. Um, the, the 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 claw the the paws are to get the get the the kicking hooves, the antler on the way, and then they but the the killing motion is with with a bite, bite going for the neck or yeah. with um I think all cats it's the neck some cats are big enough they can break a neck with them go away outside world nice nice old school ring there buddy yeah, yeah. but fun stock um <laughs> well can we just take a second to appreciate that most animals kill with their face i think that's yeah. so it's so crazy, dude. Like you're right there, just <laughs> yeah, yeah. My brain, my eyes, my everything. You take it. it, it yeah. it's, it's it's so a... intense. I guess so it's, intense. That's the thing that's worth noting about about humans. Um, if you think most prey animals, again, using African savanna, uh, most of them, their big, their 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 big thing. It's it's a it's a, a kick or an antler sweep, but once something's within grappling range, you don't have as much, but humans like a, um, we're, we're, we've got a lot of defense right here. Like, oh no, I've got an antler in my hand because I was digging for roots and ah, yeah. this is right there. And that's a very, that would, I guess that's sort of I, like, what, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just, I, I want to hear your thought, go ahead. I was like, it, it's like a, what, um, what category of threat and range do we have? It's almost like animals that are that have that kind of like right there, like hey, we can we still have options when something's right on us. Yeah. Um, we're talking porcupines and warthogs and honey badgers and other things that pound for pound aren't usually worth messing with. Yeah, yeah, snakes, huh. snakes, yeah. yeah. So um back to the face thing like so most animals are killing with their face it seems like i wonder if that would influence our well and i don't can't say i know this for sure this just seems kind of intuitive and anecdotal that the main target is the neck the neck and the face but um yeah would that be, be maybe because a lot of our predators were attacking with their faces i mean like that's that was the universal target is like stop that thing you know that's trying to bite me um yeah plus it just happens to be like where your central nervous system is and your airway and so i guess it's a win uh yeah. it's both but yeah. well, i mean most I likely like, we were dealing with animals faces that were threatening us not their you know back leg or something i don't know yeah there's we didn't have any hunters that were so what as far as like active predators we had you know crocodiles that was a thing it's an avoidable hazard but that's still that's a that was one that, that that's entirely faced they don't they don't attack with anything else really um we had uh we had hyenas and dog relatives that's pretty much all face it's doing the, the killing um big cats you know a a very large cat you know uh, a lion or an early saber tooth they could kill us with a swipe but that's yeah. that's such a bigger more powerful animal it's you know couldn't they also kill us just by jumping on us and breaking a spine so that's <laughs> it's, it's also that's yeah. that's not yeah but really 
traditionally the killing what the killing itself was done with the jaw whatever you yeah. see you don't see lions on the serengeti killing is all by hitting on the head a whole bunch of times it's using the arms are controlling whatever else they're going to defend themselves with and then neck bite yeah um so that's let's list all the animals children Shark That's face, <laughs> snake face, face. lion crocodile. face, crocodile face, T Rex face, face, face. Uh, <laughs> even like even bears when bears are doing are are killing. That's primarily with biting. They're defensive when they're attacking. Um, it's they use their paws more. But yeah, even an animal that's getting known for just having a wildly destructive force, um, bludgeoning is not the best way to for it's not the most efficient way for predators to, to kill something. I don't know of any. I don't know of any predator, any large land for us, any large land predator that uses bludgeoning besides humans. What about uh, the well, only great, animal? great apes? Great apes. There we go. Um, yeah, the the the, the c c cl club hands. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that that will be I uh, with um. In the best hunting, the best examples of hunting. So it's from my under my understanding with uh, with chimp hunting, it's either using a spear, using a stick, you know, poking into a hole, or. It's in hunting monkeys. I guess the way they're most likely to kill them is to, when they they'll chase them to the trees, corn them the ranch, and then just drop them because they'll let gravity do the work. Right. And that's a big part. Of, and there's other other finishing apes on the ground, right? Yeah. Or or if it's if it's a chimp and it's actually caught it, it's just a matter of pulling the you know pulling them and pulling them apart like a rotisserie chicken. It's yeah. <laughs> icky. So strong. So strong. So horrible. So scary. Well, I've got about five more minutes. Do you, how do you want to, what kind of questions have we come up with? So I guess the, the biggest one is that the, the, the one I would love to see other people produce hypotheses on is, is the, the, um, uh, let's call it the toddler throwing punch hypothesis. Is that, is that a well-documented behavior in young children that goofy, that goofy, goofy cocky motion that they do it's not maybe it's not universal i've just seen it so many times that i'm assuming there has to be some kind of it's such a weird motion that i assume i'm wondering if it's a primal reflex because i'm trying to think of any other it just it doesn't look very cool it's not like it does, you know it, it um it looks weird and kind of awkward if there were any other motion like if i saw multiple children you know uh doing this or something yeah. some other or just like you know, spearing like, the, spearing the throat or eyes or something it's like yeah yeah but as, as far as like, it doesn't make sense it makes no sense for that without a rock in the hand with a rock in the hand if i saw i saw a four-year-old doing that on the playground this is not a problem i saw a four with a rock in their hand like whoa whoa quickly you know someone get up you know uh, you know, get a blanket and tackle this kid before someone gets gets hurt badly. Yeah. So I think that would be the, be the hypothesis one. for this one. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot here to to kick around. I'd love to maybe do another one on the same. Maybe do a part two for this. Yeah. And maybe we can then go to uh go to club. Uh, I almost said the c word. Not gonna say say clubs again. Uh, but long, you know, short stick, bludgeoning stick, and uh, spear. So like, you know, reach, pointy stick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's a fun questions. Cool, cool stuff, man. Yeah. Well, always a pleasure, my friend. As always. Cool. And uh, so long to everyone in Radio Land. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching. Hope you had fun. Take care. <laughs>